we want to find the arc length of the polar curve given by r equals five plus five cosine theta graphed here. So we're looking for the length of the entire curve or this length here. We'll be using the arc length formula where the arc length L is equal to the integral of the square root of r squared plus the r d theta squared integrated with respect to theta from alpha to beta. So notice when theta is equal to zero radians, r will be equal to five plus five times one, so r will be 10, and therefore at zero radians we'd be at this point on the curve, and the orientation would be in this direction here. So to find the arc length, we could integrate from zero to two pi radians, one complete revolution, but because we have symmetry across the polar axis or the x-axis, we could integrate from zero radians here to pi radians here and then just double the arc length. Notice how when theta is pi radians, r would be five plus five times cosine pi, so r would be zero, so the point would be on the pole or this point here. So let's go ahead and use the symmetry to find the arc length of the polar curve. But before we do this, we know r equals five plus five cosine theta, and therefore dr d theta, the derivative of r with respect to theta, would be equal to zero plus five times negative sine theta, or negative five sine theta. So the arc length L, because we're using the symmetry, will be equal to two times the integral of the square root of r squared, which would be the quantity five plus five cosine theta squared plus the r d theta squared, which would be negative five sine theta squared. And we're integrating from zero to pi radians Again, because we're finding half the arc length, then multiplying by two. The other option would be to not multiply by two and integrate from zero to two pi radians. Now let's begin simplifying the integrand, so we'll square this and square this. So we'll have two times integral of the square root. Now when we square the quantity five plus five cosine theta, you may want to check this, but it's going to be 25 plus 50 cosine theta plus 25 cosine squared theta, and then here we'll have plus 25 sine squared theta. But now let's focus on just these two terms here Notice how if we factor out 25, we'd have 25 times the quantity cosine squared theta plus sine squared theta. We should recognize this as being equal to one. So this is just 25 times one or 25, and we have 25 here, which gives us 50. So now we have two times the integral of the square root of 50 plus 50 cosine theta And now let's factor out the common factor of 50 here. So we have the square root of 50 times the quantity one plus cosine theta. And now that we have a product here, we can write this as a product of two square roots. So we'd have two times integral from zero to pi of square root 50 times the square root of one plus cosine theta. Let's continue on the next slide. We can factor out the square root of 50, but since 50 is equal to 25 times two, this simplifies to five square root two, which means we'd have 10 square root two times the integral of the square root of one plus cosine theta d theta. And now to simplify the square root of one plus cosine theta, we'll be using this power reducing formula given here below. Notice how here we have one plus cosine two u. So if we multiplied both sides by two, we could say that two cosine squared u equals one plus cosine two u.
Before we perform this substitution, though, notice how this angle here is half this angle here on the right. So our substitution is going to be two times cosine squared theta divided by two. So again, we'd have 10 square root two times integral, I forgot the limits of integration here. We'd have the square root of two cosine squared theta divided by two d theta. Again, we have a product here of two and cosine squared. So we can write this as 10 square root two times the integral of square root two times the square root of cosine squared theta divided by two. Let's go ahead and factor out the square root, but 10 square root two times square root two would be 20. So we have 20 times integral of, and the square root of cosine squared theta divided by two would just be cosine theta divided by two. And now we can finally find the antiderivative that we do have to perform a u substitution where we'd have u equals theta divided by two so differential u equals one half d theta, multiplying both sides by two. Notice that two du equals d theta. So we'll have an extra factor of two when integrating cosine theta divided by two. So we have 20 times the antiderivative of cosine theta divided by two would be two sine theta divided by two. Let's go ahead and factor out the two and then perform our substitution. So we'd have 40 times, when theta is, when theta is equal to pi, we'd have sine pi over two minus, when theta is zero, we have sine zero. Well, sine zero is equal to zero, sine pi over two is equal to one, and therefore the arc length is exactly 40 units. So going back to our sketch just for a moment, the arc length, the length all the way around this curve, this length here, it's exactly 40 units. I hope you found this helpful.